Hello, this is Steve at SDR Play. In today's video, we're going to look at using the recording function in SDR Uno. First up, what is the record function? And uh, the way to understand this is when you make a recording in SDR Uno, you're actually recording the full spectrum you have selected in the software, which allows you to come back, play back a recording, and tune across the band set different modes for FM, AM, upper sideband, lower sideband, etc. and essentially use the recording just as if you were using an RSP Live. So in this video we're going to look into using the record function and then for those of you that don't need or don't want to record the entire spectrum I'm going to talk a little bit about recording just a single frequency. So first up let's look at recording using SDR Uno. This is my standard setup using an RSP1A with SDR Uno. At the moment, as you can see, I'm tuned to the local broadcast bands. And now let's see if we can make a recording. The first thing we want to do is open up the recording panel and there's a button up here in the SDR UNO main window that we can use to open it up. Now this recording window may be open by default depending on your screen resolution when you first run SDR UNO but since like me you probably don't do recording all the time uh, you can just close this window and then uh, bring it back as required from the recording panel. So now if we want to make a recording of the signals that we see on the spectrum here, all we have to do is press the record button in the recorder window and you can see the recording starts. Uh, there's an indication in the window of the size of the recording. And talking of recording size, that is a function of the final sample rate, which you see here is two megahertz. I have a sample rate of two and a decimation of one. And uh, the actual size of the recording in terms of how many uh, kilobytes or megabytes per minute is purely a function of the final sample rate that you're using. And basically that's it. When you're finished recording, click on the stop button and uh, the recording is complete. Now there are some extra features that you can uh, use when you're doing recording. One of the most uh, useful ones is the scheduler. And if we click on the scheduler here, we can see we can set start date and times and end date and times and then click on engage timer and do a timed recording. This is extremely useful if you want to record signals say a couple of minutes and a couple of uh, minutes before and after the top of the hour which enables you to play back the signals and listen to stations of interest for identification purposes. Other settings are available from the settings window in the main panel. If we click to the right when we open up the settings window under miscellaneous, you see we have, um, first one here is multi VRX WAV file mode. That's normally checked by default. And what that means is when you play back the recording, you can actually open up two or more VRXs just as if you were following the signal in real time, which may be useful if you want to monitor two different frequencies at once. Secondly, you have the ability to specify the maximum record length uh, by default it's set to 2 gigabytes. Uh, this is because some systems can't handle files larger than 2 gigabytes and uh, if you wish though you can up that to as high as 4 gigabytes. It also stops you from making arbitrarily long recordings by leaving the recorder turned on and uh, not filling up your hard drive. And then thirdly you have the ability to add a WAV file encryption code and uh, basically what this means is if you specify a 4 digit number in here if you do not have SDR Uno set to that same code on playback, you will only get a uh, garbled output, and I'll demonstrate that later. So basically, that are, those are all the options for uh, using the recorder. Uh, one final thing is you may be wondering, well, where is my recording? Where has it gone? And uh, by default, recordings are saved in your documents folder on your Windows machine. You can change that by right-clicking in the recorder window here, and you can see browse for folder by default set to documents on this PC but you can create a new folder anywhere else you like on your drive. So that's basically all there is to know about recording.
So now I'd like to talk a little bit more about the storage space requirements when using the record function. And basically the size of the recording is a function of the final sample rate you have set up in SDR Uno and of course the length of time that you run the recording for. So here are some examples and I did three 60 second recordings with different final sample rates. In the first one we see a final sample rate of 385 kilohertz and that somewhat unusual uh, sample rate is selected by using the 20 meter band switch within SDR Uno which then selects custom sample rates and decimation values to fit the entire 20 meter band. So a 60 second recording at uh, 335 kilohertz as shown in the fi final SR box in the uh, SDR Uno main window worked out to be 92.4 megabytes. If we look across to the right, I manually selected a different sample rate of 2 MHz with a decimation of 1, which leaves us again with a final sample rate of 2 MHz. And at this sample rate, for a 60 second recording, I ended up with a file size of 480 megabytes. And then in the third example, I went to the maximum sample rate you can achieve with an RSP, which is 10 MHz. And you'll see that uh, doing a 60 second recording with a 10 megahertz sample rate, I ended up with a file size of 2.15 gigabytes. So it's important that you don't necessarily have to record at sample rates higher than you need for the purpose in hand. For example, if you're looking at HF, you probably don't ever need more than about a 500 kilohertz sample rate, and that keeps your recording sizes under control. So I did a little bit of uh, mathematics uh, just based on my experimental results and I discovered that we can calculate roughly what the file size is going to be in megabytes if we take the time of the recording in seconds, multiply by the final sample rate in megahertz, and then multiply by 4. And uh, that approximation holds out pretty good for the uh, 385 kilohertz and uh, 2 megahertz sample rates shown here. It actually came out a little bit too high. I think it calculates out to 2.4 gigs for a 10 megahertz sample rate. And as you can see, the, the file size I ended up with was 2.15. And uh, I believe the reason for that is above uh, final sample rates or above sample rates of 6 megahertz, the file size is a little bit small due to uh, reduced resolution on the internal A to Ds in the RSP. So hopefully you'll find that helpful if you need to do a, a quick envelope uh, calculation of how big your recordings might be. And let's just recap on the settings available for you when you're doing a recording. Uh, the most useful function for me personally is the scheduler. And by clicking on the scheduler config button in the recorder window, it opens up a schedule. You can name it, uh, you can set uh, start and end uh, dates and times. And uh, just by clicking on engage timer, you can uh, leave your system to go ahead and make a recording for you unattended and then play it back later. Uh, in the lower left, if we right click in the recorder window, it opens up a, another window which allows us to set the default folder for recordings. As you see here, it's uh, set to documents, which is the default setting. And then the other settings are accessed from the settings button in the uh, SDR Uno main window. Uh, the first one is the multi VRX recording mode. And uh, by default that is checked and that enables you to open up multiple VRXs when playing back the recording. Uh, I suggest just leaving that checked as the default setting. You also have the option to set the maximum recording size. By default it's set to 2 gigabytes, but you can set it as high as uh, 4 gigs. And then finally you have the option to encrypt the WAV file by putting in a unique 4 digit number in the WAV file encryption code box if you don't want other people to have access to recordings you've made. So now Let's go and look at the other side of the coin. How do we play back our recordings? So how do you play back a recording? Well, the first thing we need to do is tell SDR Uno that rather than responding to signals from an RSP, we want to look at playing back a WAV file. We do that from the Options button in the main window. Under Select Input, we have a choice of an RSP, or as we want now, a WAV file. 
When we click on that, it will open up a window which allows us to pick a recording and uh, use that for playback. Now I have one here that I recorded uh, earlier on the HF band, so we'll open that up. And when we see it opened, we see it, the file name down here, and we also see uh, the time. We click on play, and now our signal plays back. Now one thing uh, we should notice is, for example, there's a signal right here, which doesn't sound particularly good. The reason for that being, the settings in the VRX are where we left them before, so we were previously on the uh, AM broadcast bands, and what we want to do now that we're looking at 20 meters is go to uh, upper sideband. So if we do that... Won't be able to use my driveway for so, until Monday, so, so... Suddenly the signal is much more comprehensible. So, um, really, at this point, it's just like working in real time. We can scan across the band. There's another signal here. We can tune that. So basically, we have complete freedom to work our, our way through the band, listen to any signals that are there, and try and identify them. Uh, as I mentioned before, by default, multi-VRX mode is enabled. So that means that we are able, if we wish, to open up a second spectrum window, uh, a second uh, VRX, and uh, play with that independently of the main VRX. Now, some other things that I might draw your attention to um, in the recorder window is um, you can pause the, the playback, and this one here will cause the playback to loop. So if you have a fairly short recording and you don't have enough time to go through all the signals and identify them, uh, by enabling uh, looping, when you get to the end of the recording, it will straight away restart from the beginning. Secondly, um, you'll notice there's a file button now appears in the window. So if we want to change to a different recording, we can stop this, click on file, and that brings up the window again, allowing us to pick up a different, uh, a different recording. And uh, I'm looking for one I made earlier that maybe had some encryption involved. Let's try this. Oh, that one's standard as well. Maybe this one. And you see this one mentions it's being encoded. And uh, you'll see that uh, this is around 10 megahertz. So if I unmute this, and uh, let's go to approximately, uh, uh, let's uh, stop this. We'll play it. We'll turn on repeat, and uh, we'll we'll tune to WWV. And although you can kind of make out the signal, you see there's a lot of spurious responses across the spectrum, and it's not at all clear. So the way to fix that is we need to go and put in the corresponding uh, encoding key we used earlier. So we do that by going to the settings menu, and uh, I believe the encryption code I used was 4321. So we'll input that there, and then we can go down here again and play back. And now all of a sudden we see a more familiar spectrum and we can hear WWV in the background. And you'll notice by putting on repeat, as soon as we get through a few seconds of this recording, it straight away goes back to the beginning and plays it again. So that basically is an overview of how to use the uh, recording function in UNO and also to uh, play back any recordings you've made. Now, if you need further information on this, it is covered in the SDR UNO user manual. And uh, as you probably know, you can access that also from the options menu by selecting user manual. 
and that will open up the uh, user manual and you can refer to the section on uh, recording which I believe is nine point something here we go uh, IQ recording and uh, you'll see much of the same thing that I've demonstrated here okay now let's recap the options for doing playback using SDR Uno recordings the first step is to press the options button in the SDR Uno main window and then under select input select WAV file rather than your RSP and you might note that after you finish playing back recordings if you want to go back live to your RSP you have to perform this step again and this time select RSP and then below that we see the recorder window and within the recorder window we will see the file name that we selected when we initially selected a uh, WAV file if we wish to select a different file for play playback we can click on the file button towards the right hand side which will open up a window that lets you select which of your recordings you wish to play back and you'll notice that each of them has a time and date stamp on them and also an indication of the uh, tune frequency that was used when the recording was made once you've uh, opened up the file and are playing it back one option is to select the repeat button and what this does is as soon as the recording has finished playing it will go back to the beginning and play again it will just loop and loop and loop allowing you to continue playing with the band if you uh, need more time to explore and look at different signals that may show up in the recording and then finally beneath the file button you will see a, an indication either standard which means no encoding has been used or it will say encoded uh, and you'll have to put in the uh, four digit number you set up in the uh, main settings window to play the file back without distortion now earlier I mentioned that there are options for recording a single frequency if you don't want to go ahead and uh, record the entire spectrum from within SDR Uno so let's look at just one way of doing that so what happens if you want to record a single radio station rather than the entire spectrum well you don't really need SDR Uno to do that for you because there are plenty of tools already built into Windows uh, one way to do it as you may be familiar if you've used external decoding software with SDR Uno is the use of a virtual audio cable if we go to the RX control settings window we can select an output device in this case uh, line one for using VAC or if you use a VB cable you would select cable input and at this point what you're doing is you're redirecting the output from this RX in SDR Uno to a potential third source now what would that third source be well you actually have a recorder built into Windows in Windows 10 we can go down and we can find something called voice recorder I believe in uh, earlier versions of Windows it may have been called audio recorder or some such now before you can use that it is expecting to record audio from your microphone and we need to uh, go into the Windows sound settings and tell it that our input device in my case I'm using a microphone so you can hear my words but you would pick here either line one for virtual audio cable or cable output for VB audio cable and once you've selected that as your input you can then return to the Microsoft voice recorder and click on the uh, microphone icon and it will record however many seconds of speech or in this case audio from a particular radio station uh, at this point I'm going to play back uh, an example I made earlier Horn Frogs this afternoon not only are the Longhorns facing the 17th ranked team in the nation they're also dealing with one of the top coach so basically that's how you can record a specific uh, radio station that you're tuned into via SDR Uno okay that's about it for today thank you for watching the video at this point I'd like to uh, mention as I did uh, earlier in the video that for more information on the SDR Uno recording function it can be found in the user manual which is accessible via the options button in the SDR Uno main window 
I'd also like to draw your attention to our new uh, catalog available online, which now lists all our videos and applications note. And uh, you can either look at the link shown here, or there will be a link down below in the YouTube description that will allow you to click on it to get straight to our catalog. Or you can find it from our regular website, sdrplay.com, along with all sorts of other information on the RSP family and of course, software downloads. So once again, thank you for watching the video. We hope you found it helpful and 73s.